Hello everyone. Welcome to another episode of Mind Map. Today's topic of discussion is the greenhouse effect. We will start the episode with the introduction, then we will discuss greenhouse effect mechanism, greenhouse gases, greenhouse effect in climate change, and at last we will look into some major concepts related to the greenhouse effect. So, let's begin today's session. The greenhouse effect is a natural phenomena in which certain gases in the earth's atmosphere trap and absorb incoming solar radiation from the sun. The phenomena is named after a structure named greenhouse where plants that require controlled climate conditions are grown. The natural greenhouse effect keeps the planet's temperature within a range suitable for life, making it a fundamental aspect of our climate system. Without the natural greenhouse effect, the earth's average temperature might have plummeted to as low as minus 17 degrees Celsius. Atmospheric gases like carbon dioxide, methane, nitrous oxide, water vapor and chlorofluorocarbons can trap the outgoing radiation from the earth's surface thereby causing greenhouse effect. Unchecked greenhouse gas emissions could lead to a 5 degree Celsius temperature rise by the end of the century. Now let us discuss greenhouse effect mechanism. First, solar radiation absorption. The incoming ultraviolet radiations from sun are absorbed by the earth's surface causing it to warm up. About 71% of the sunlight that reaches the earth is absorbed by its surface and atmosphere. Second, infrared radiation emission. The warmed earth surface then emits heat energy in the form of infrared radiation back toward the atmosphere. Third, greenhouse gas absorption. Greenhouse gases in the atmosphere absorb a portion of this outgoing infrared radiation. Fourth, re-radiation. After absorbing the infrared radiation, greenhouse gases re-emit some of this heat energy. both back toward the earth surface and outwards into space fifth heat trapping this process of absorbing and re-radiating heat by greenhouse gases effectively traps heat within the earth's atmosphere creating a natural insulation layer now let us see what are greenhouse gases greenhouse gas is any gas that has the property of absorbing infrared radiation emitted from earth surface re-radiating it back to earth surface Kyoto Protocol of UNFCCC recognizes six greenhouse gases. These gases contribute directly to climate change owing to their positive radiative forcing effect. First, carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is the most significant greenhouse gas. Natural sources of atmospheric include volcanic activity, decay of organic matter and respiration. Anthropogenically, carbon dioxide is released by burning of fossil fuels for various uses. Burning of forest and the clearing of land also contributes to the release of carbon dioxide. Its concentration is greater close to the earth's surface as it is denser than air. Second, methane. Methane ranks as the second most prevalent greenhouse gas following carbon dioxide. Methane qualifies as a short-lived climate pollutant. It has the potential to create a more substantial insulating effect than carbon dioxide. Methane has a faster and more pronounced warming impact on the atmosphere. Methane producing bacteria typically thriving in oxygen depleted environments generate methane from specific chemical compounds. These bacteria are commonly found in wetlands, inadequately ventilated landfills, and submerged paddy fields. Agriculture stands out as the primary contributor to methane emissions. Third, nitrous oxide. Following carbon dioxide and methane, nitrous oxide ranks as the third most abundant greenhouse gas in the atmosphere. Nitrous oxide is exceptionally potent, being approximately 300 times more effective at trapping heat than carbon dioxide. Human activities such as the burning of fossil fuels, biomass combustion, industrial nitric acid production, and the use of fertilizers in agriculture are the primary sources of nitrous oxide emissions. Within the troposphere, Nitrous oxide demonstrates chemical stability persisting for an estimated 120 years before transitioning into the stratosphere. In the stratosphere, nitrous oxide contributes to the gradual depletion of stratospheric ozone over time. Fourth, sulfur hexafluoride. It is a highly potent and long-lasting greenhouse gas. The major source of SF6 emissions is an electrical insulator in high-voltage electronic equipment. As per IPCC, Sulfur hexafluoride is the most potent greenhouse gas with a global warming potential 23900 times that of carbon dioxide over a 100 year period. Fifth, hydrofluorocarbons. HFCs are short-lived climate pollutants with lifetimes in the atmosphere ranging from 15 to 29 years. HFCs are entirely man-made. They are used in applications such as refrigeration, air conditioning, building insulation, fire extinguishing systems and aerosols. 
The Kigali Amendment to Montreal Protocol is associated with phasing out of hydrofluorocarbons. 6. Perfluorocarbons Perfluorocarbons are synthetic compounds composed entirely of fluorine and carbon. Perfluorocarbons are chemicals that are produced as a byproduct of aluminium and semiconductor manufacturing. Due to the stable molecular structures, PFCs are largely immune to the chemical processes that break down most pollutants. They are broken down by high-energy ultraviolet radiation in the mesosphere. They are used as substitutes for ozone-depleting substances in the stratosphere. Now let us discuss the greenhouse effect and climate change. First, global warming. The increase in atmospheric carbon dioxide levels, primarily from burning fossil fuels, has led to global warming. Carbon dioxide traps heat from the sun, preventing it from escaping into space and raises the Earth's average temperature. Second, extreme weather events. Global warming is a driving force behind climate change. It leads to more frequent and severe weather events such as hurricanes, droughts, floods and heat waves. Climate change also disrupts ecosystems, threatens biodiversity and impacts agriculture and food security. Third, feedback loops. As the planet warms, certain feedback loops can exacerbate the effects of greenhouse gas emissions. For example, as Arctic ice melts due to higher temperatures, it exposes darker ocean surfaces that absorb more heat, further accelerating warming. Now let us have a look at some related concepts. First, carbon footprint. A carbon footprint is a measure of the total amount of greenhouse gas emissions, primarily carbon dioxide, but also other gases like methane and nitrous oxide that are directly or indirectly associated with an individual, organization, product, event or activity. It is typically expressed in units of carbon dioxide equivalent, which allows for the comparison of different gases based on their global warming potential. Second, carbon neutrality. Also known as net zero carbon dioxide emissions, carbon neutrality refers only to carbon dioxide emissions and is a state of balance between the carbon dioxide emitted into the atmosphere and the carbon dioxide removed from the atmosphere. Third, carbon sink. A carbon sink is a natural or artificial reservoir or storage area that absorbs and retains more carbon dioxide from the atmosphere than it releases. Examples of natural carbon sinks are forest, oceans, wetlands, and grasslands, etc. Fourth, carbon offsetting. Carbon offsetting is a practice that involves compensating for greenhouse gas emissions produced in one area or by one entity by reducing or removing an equivalent amount of greenhouse gases from the atmosphere elsewhere. Now it's time for the practice question. For prelims, the question is, in rural road construction, the use of which of the following is preferred for ensuring environmental sustainability or to reduce carbon footprint? This question was asked in UPSC prelims 2020. First, copper slag. Second, cold mix asphalt technology. Third, geotextiles. Fourth, hot mix asphalt technology. Fifth, Portland cement. Select the correct answer using the code given below. 1, 2 and 3 only. 2, 3 and 4 only. 4 and 5 only. Or 1 and 5 only. For mains, the question is, climate change is a global problem. How India will be affected by climate change? How Himalayan and coastal states of India will be affected by climate change? This question was asked in UPSC mains 2017. That's all for today's session. Stay tuned for the next episode. Thanks for watching.